Hello. For this interview, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Dr. Roy Cohen Kadosh, Professor of Cognitive Neuroscience here at Oxford. His work focuses on better understanding the neurocognitive basis of mathematical abilities in children and adults. And in recent years, he has expanded his work to investigate executive functioning. I'm excited to ask Roy a little more about the path he took to get here. To start things off, Roy, would you be willing to tell us a little bit about where you grew up? Of course, hi, Marco. Um, so I grew up in Israel. Uh, my parents uh, arrived uh, to Israel from Iran. Uh, my father as a child, my mother um, as an adult. Um, and um, I, both of them were um, actually very encouraging uh, um, that I would go and uh, be a good student and uh, eventually will have, uh, you know, would be in a position to um, have a really good uh, profession. So they really encouraged me to do that because they did not have the possibility uh, to acquire high education. Uh, my father, especially, who had to um, stop studying uh, when he was 13. Um, back then, uh, there was a big disparity between uh, Jews who coming from uh, North Africa and uh, the Middle East, um, and they were directed more into uh, professions that are more uh, manual, like uh, mechanics or uh, electricians and so on. Um, and my father all the time used to tell me that I must go and study, not to end up quoting him like him, uh, you know, working really hard in the outside, in the cold, in the rain. Uh, I didn't used to see him for during the week because he used to work uh, very long hours. Um, and yeah, I think they gave me a lot of motivation to do that. And I have to say, despite that many people in our family circle I used to say that this is a really bad decision because um, from going into higher education, it's not something that uh, fits to, to us. And, and I'm very much encouraging a lot of people when I hear that from younger generation that, you know, they need to believe in themselves and no one can tell you what fits to you or not. If you really believe in something, you must go in and pursue that. Great. And so how did you make the decision then to go specifically not just in the higher education, but into psychology? Um, so um, unfortunately, when I uh, was uh, 14, uh, my mother who uh, suffered from uh, schizophrenia, um, she had a lot of uh, difficulties uh, and the medical treatment did not work for her well. And eventually uh, she uh, took her own life. Uh, it was very traumatic uh, for us as a family. I, I was the firstborn. It, it also brought a lot of responsibilities in my case to help my father and my younger children. And I was really interested on, on why she did it. And I wanted to understand better schizophrenia. I had a dream to find a cure for that as, you know, 15 years old. I read a lot of books on that, uh, you know, that are aims for students. And I knew quite a lot on that. Um, and I started to study psychology. I want to be a clinical psychologist. And I found out that there is much more in psychology. I fall in love into cognitive, um, cognitive psychology. I had great professors uh, that um, um, really uh, showed me all the magic that there is in psychology. You know, if it's cognitive psychology, neuropsychology, uh, that I, I really was and still fascinated by that. And I decided this is what I want to do. Um, I, I started as a, as a student, not at the university, but at a small college. Um, it allowed me to do a part-time degree and work during that time in, in three different part-time jobs. Um, and one of the professors, uh, Professor, Professor Avishai Hennig, uh, was eventually my PhD supervisor, uh, took me to his lab, gave me to be a research assistant there. Um, I wrote a paper during my first degree. Uh, I got uh, a, probably the most prestigious scholarship in Israel to go right away to direct track um, and do my PhD. And this is a rare occasion in Israel to do something like that. And yeah, since then I'm in psychology. Uh, I decided not to work on schizophrenia. I think I'm too close to that. 
I tried to do that. I was all shaking when I was in the hospital interacting with patients. And uh, I don't know, maybe my students in the future will do something along this line. Incredible. So now that you are a psychologist, what would you say is the most important piece of advice you've received from a mentor or colleague? Not to be afraid to fail. Um, we are, a lot of time, we are risk averse. We're afraid to fail. We give tax like we are failures or something like that. It's stupid, you know. If someone wants to succeed, they need to learn to fall, get up on their feet and go on and not to be afraid to fall. And there are such great examples of people who failed, but did not give up and eventually managed to do and get to the point that they want to get to. So if you have a dream, don't be afraid to fail on the way, you know, it's a marathon. It's not, life is a marathon. It's not 100 meter running. So don't be afraid to fail. And if it happens, you know, celebrate also your failures and success will follow up. Right. Thanks so much for that advice. And of course, for taking the time to chat with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Marcus.